This episode is going to be more for uh, potential advertisers. We want to inspire you. I want to share with you guys and show that Haydenville for entering into a, uh, an ad with a Stay tuned. Right. We'll be right back. See you soon. Hi. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Southern Oregon Safaris. We're Buffalo Rome. Buffalo Rome. I'm Hayden. I'm Jerry. And this is Susie right here. We're going to talk a little bit about Susie. Hayden, uh, you gave me a clip of commercial contest you entered. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, well, we did something for, oh, so there was a, a they had a, anybody knows Doritos and PepsiCo, they were doing for a while uh, these, uh, challenges basically and so there was for young aspiring actors and filmmakers to basically branch out and create be creators and be really creative and show their creativity through these commercials that you could make and there was money and the chance to actually have your commercial playing on TV for Super Bowl so it's a big deal so for a new filmmaker who's never really done anything if you win this competition not alone do you get a big chunk of change but you are now out in the wide open. You went from zero to 100 because now you, the whole world, gets to see your product, uh, what you're capable of, what you've created. So there was the crash the Super Bowl contest for Doritos, and it ran for I don't even know how many years. I have to look, but I think it ran for like eight or nine years, and, and I don't believe it runs anymore. But there were there were some really great commercials that came out of it over the years. Um, I'll admit I, there were some that were super creative and hilarious, and and you know uh, it was a very successful campaign for Doritos. So we're going to let you sit back and, and we're, uh, Hayden's going to share his contribution with you guys. We'll be right back. See you soon. Copy that. Sit tight. We're sending a truck. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're going to ask Caden uh, a couple of questions about that commercial. It was intriguing. First of all, where was it filmed? It was filmed on our ranch when we lived down in Southern California. Oh. I had a 165 acre ranch down there in the Angeles National Forest, uh, Palm de Lacton area, about an hour north of LA, uh, up in the mountains. Really nice setting up there. It's a beautiful place. Uh, but yeah, we, we filmed it there on the ranch. And all the animals in the show? For all our animals, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we, uh, we basically, I saw this challenge or competition, and I thought, well, that would be really something fun to, to do. Obviously, you don't really think about what it really costs to do, because that commercial actually costs about $10,000 for me to create. And you're kind of going out on a limb, because it all comes out of your own pocket. Now, some people can create a commercial a little bit less, but there's a lot that goes into those. I mean, we had to bring in a whole crew of people. Um, I was very fortunate because the uh, person at the time uh, that was directing it and, and did a lot, most of the work, uh, he uh, did a lot of the work on his own, like editing and stuff like that. He brought some of the people that he deals with. And he's a producer, director kind of guy. Um, we won't give his name in case he doesn't want it out there. But uh, he really made it a lot easier for us to get it done, but there was still a lot of cost involved to get this thing to the quality so it could actually have its chance at succeeding and winning in the competition. Of course, we did not win. Oh, you should have. I've watched that commercial over and over and over again because now I have the link to it. And you guys can watch it over and over again too, right here at Southern Oregon Safari. Please enjoy it. And uh, Hayden, I'm going to leave a link at the end of this video to allow people and potential advertisers to get in touch with you. I'll go ahead and leave that information in the description below. That'd be great. And then uh, that way they can get inspired to see the variety of animals that appeared in this show and figure out if you could use any of these animals in your project. Hayden also has done other Super Bowl commercials. Yep. And pedigree uh, rhinoceros commercials for Pedigree Dog Food. It was, it was also a Super Bowl Sunday commercial. It was uh, for a, the dog adoption drive. Oh. They did. And that was a really successful commercial. Yeah, Spike's the big puppy dog. Yeah. And all we did was supply the animals. I didn't do any other stuff. We supplied animals. That was it. And also, just recently, we filmed a music video up 
here with the elephants just about a month and a half ago. So Hayden's worked with other music geniuses. I have, yes, many, many big names. Drop, drop, drop a few names. I know the Christian Aguilera, we did, uh, which is hurt. Uh, we did Katy Perry. Uh, we did, uh, gosh, I've done so many, a lot of Michael Jackson stuff, Janet Jackson, uh, Paul Abdul, we did quite a few. Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, just about done them all, really. Well, over they, years, over many years. Well, not all with elephants and stuff, some was just dogs, but anytime you see an animal on a music video, there's a good chance that I could be one of the people that worked on that. And you very were in the few, background. There's very few of us in the industry, it's a very small industry, and it's even become smaller over the years. Oh. Yeah, well, in the background, I uh, remember the time, and in uh, Christine Aguilera's hurt, yes, I was in okay. the background of those. And just to let you go, guys know, these animals are not CGI. No. <laughs> this is not back in the day. This is the real thing. Now, today, <laughs> in current modern day, with everything, everything that seems to be CGI, we're starting to even CGI uh, human actors, so. Oh. The art of the filmmaking has really gone... Uh, by the way of technology and technology and AI are pretty much going to take over, I think. I don't think there'll be too many filmmakers in the future. Yeah, I'm, I don't call, know how much I'm calling it being lazy. Let me call it for what it, what I personally think it is. It's just lazy. The thing is, is the film industry is really just a big money-making uh, industry now. Uh, and back in the day, it was all about art. People just wanted to really create art. And now it's really, you know, I make this joke, but it's not a joke. Back in the day, film was made by directors and producers. Today, it's made by lawyers and accountants. Oh, what is not How today can we made, made by money? lawyers? How can we make as much money as we can with the least amount of liability? Well, guess what? CGI and AI is the answer because you've just now cut out a lot of people out of your show, a lot of payroll is gone, and now when you get your credits rolling, they used to roll for miles, and you sit there and watch credits roll for 30 minutes after the show, yeah. it's pretty soon going to be, you know, Created by AI. Yeah. Thank you. Final credit. AI. AI. Bye. Uh, <laughs> it's just an unfortunate situation. I guess that happens with everything after a while. Technology eventually will surpass. Yeah, but the it, art. It, it, it's gonna. I I foresee it's uh, the bottom line is gonna come down to what the audience wants. Because if the true. audience and see for me personally, I see uh, uh, well AI. I see CGI. I don't like the quality of CGI personally. I really don't like it. You know, and some people really either love it or they hate it. I can't stand it. Yeah, people always, I'll tell you another really fun, it's not a fun story, but it's a story. Uh, you know, a lot of people know what I have and know what I do and they'll say, oh, I saw a spike your rhinoceros on a Duralast commercial. And I've been on the Duralast commercial and they didn't accept it because they felt, well, that's out of our budget or they just didn't want to give me that kind of money. Because it's a lot of work to work at rhinoceros and travel around. I'm not doing it for cheap. If I'm going to do it, I better be paid right to do it because it's got to better my animal's life or it's not worth it to me. Yeah. Uh, but what wound up happening is they went up to CGI in the rhino and everybody kept calling going, oh my gosh, I saw a spike on the door last morning, so I loved it. It was awesome. I'm like, you might want to watch it four or five more times. And it was so bad, but it took me explaining to people, look what you're looking at half a dozen times before they realized, oh my gosh, that doesn't even look like a rhino really. I'm like, you saw a horn, you saw a gray, and your mind, you already were told, your mind already told you you saw a rhinoceros. Oh, in reality, wow. this thing had multiple joints in the wrong place on its legs, the ears weren't on the right side, part of its head, its eyes were not, not placed in the right place. It was a really poor job of trying to create a rhinoceros. But guess what? The audience doesn't realize it. And so, it's the same thing with like a giraffe, you see, or an elephant, even in the background. It's so easy to fool the mind on a small, smaller TV screen. Now, as our screens are getting larger at home, it's a little harder to fool. But if you really look at a lot of these images, you're gonna see that these animals are not anatomically correct. <laughs> the feet aren't right, there's just all these, just all kinds of little things. The tail's not in the right position. Mutants! But you know, again, uh, I see films all the time, people go, oh, did you do uh, 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 Jumanji? There's no real animals in Jumanji. I didn't think so, they didn't but, look real at all. But 90% of the people out there that live in the cities don't really know what real animals really look like very often. And so in their mind, if they see something with a trunk hanging off of it and it's moving, it's got to be an elephant, right? If it's got horns, it's... Gonna... So it's so easy to fool the mind with, with CGI. Most people don't care about quality uh, because some of these films still win all the awards, even though these fake animals, the animals were poorly created. <sighs> That's just, you know, the way it is, the fact that... Yeah. That's the way it rolls. Well, we want to thank you guys for joining us on this episode on... Uh... 
Hayden's creativity and using his animals for commercials and uh, TV shows yeah. and music videos. All right, well, I want to thank you guys for joining us on this episode. Stay tuned to, for, uh, for more. Uh, you can do that by subscribing, clicking that bell icon. That'll let you to new videos as we upload them. I try to do two a week. We launch one every Monday and Thursday, and we throw in a short once in a while, too. It's a little hard in the wintertime. You know, we're all so busy. You're so busy. I'm so busy, so we've had a little tough time connecting. So we try not to skip any, but forgive us if you, we miss a day. But we're really going to keep trying to pump them out Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah. Monday and Thursday, right? Monday and Thursday, yeah. Monday we're going to do Thursday. some uh, videos on uh, how to keep the animals warm. Stay to those. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. We're looking forward to showing you. I'm Jerry. I'm Hayden. This is Southern Oregon Safari. We're the Buffalo Roam. We'll see you guys. Thank you.